Hi, everyone. My name is Ian Van Schoten. Currently, I'm a project manager. But for the last six months or so, I have been learning JavaScript in an effort to make a career move into web development. And one of the things that I found very useful for myself, and I think was really helpful for any developer of any experience, is, is linting. So I'm going to talk briefly today about linting and the particular tool that I've chosen to use, which is ESLint. So when we talk about linting, really what we mean is parsing out the code that you write, not running it, and looking at it for certain things and, and mostly problems. So that could be syntax errors. You forgot to include a co closing bracket. It might break your code. It might introduce a bug. If you use a linter, chances are you'll find that. Many linters also encourage best practices. So this could be including all of your var declarations up at the top of your function, things like that, where if you don't do it, it's probably OK. Your code will still run. Uh, but it kind of gets you in the habit of doing things the right way. Uh, many linters also will allow you to establish a particular style that you want to use. Say you want to have single quotes and not double quotes or a particular indentation. You can usually set up the linter to enforce that so that your project is consistent. So why would you want to use uh, ESLint in particular? Uh, it, was created because it, uh, it was created to be pluggable meaning you can write your own custom rules that you can then uh, specify at runtime, and they're run just like all of the native ESLint rules. So if there's not something already there that meets your particular needs, you can write your own. If you need the results of your linting to look a certain way, you can write a custom formatter. You can even write a custom AST parser. So Babel did this uh, and wrote Babel ESLint so that ESLint can, or ESLint can understand Babel code, code that's intended to be transpiled by Babel. You can turn on or off all of the rules. If you turn them on, you can set them to either warn or error, which will determine whether ESLint exits with a 0 or a 1 exit code. And all of the rules are agenda free in ESLint. So in, in the upcoming 1.0 release, there will not even be default rules enabled when you start up. Uh, right now there is, but that will be changing, and you'll either opt into their set of default rules or you'll configure all of your own rules. So I kind of touched on this, but ES6, ES7 syntax was the big reason that I chose to use ESLint. Uh, it understands async await, for instance, if you're using the Babel uh, parser, whereas JS hint, I tried to use that, and it kind of choked on it. That may be fixed by now, I don't know, but it wasn't looking promising. It also integrates very nicely into your text editor. So as you're typing, you can see in real time, get feedback on what you've broken uh, in your linting rules, and you can fix it right then and there without waiting until your, your uh, build step, which you should be using. Uh, it integrates into your build tools, Grunt, Gulp, Broccoli, whatever you happen to be using. You can even just include it as an NPM script uh, to run before your tests. So I thought it'd be interesting just to kind of compare ESLint with probably the most popular JavaScript linter, which is uh, JS Hint. And as you can see from the numbers there, these are the, the April downloads. JS Hint has about 10 times as many downloads in a given month. Um, but the growth of ESLint has been pretty phenomenal. I'd approximate that to be exponential, which probably won't continue forever. But it's, it's a newer project. It's about two years old. JS Hint's been around a little bit longer. Uh, but it's, it's gaining a lot of steam. So to get started, it's just an NPM install. To, uh, to configure, in fact, on f Saturday, they released a new version, uh, .21. And this allows you to run uh, ESLint with an init flag, which will basically take you through a step uh, of six or eight questions. You answer those questions. And then at the end, it dumps out a, a configuration file for you. It's very basic. Uh, it might get you most of the way there. And then you can go to the website. They have very good docs, uh, very thorough for uh, setting up the rest of your configuration. And then after that, it's just a matter of linting your code. And that's a very brief introduction. Thank you.